Hello everybody, good evening and welcome to your very own Baiju's 6th, 7th and 8th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and I welcome you to today's class where we are going to be solving 10 super important questions for the Science Olympiads. And these are going to be biology questions. So I hope all of you are excited for the class wherein we will not just solve questions but we will also cover important Olympiad concepts. So very quickly students, please do let me know if my audio, my video and my screen and whatever I'm writing on the screen is visible to all of you. If it is, please do give me a quick thumbs up to let me know that we are good to go. Yes? Good evening Shashank, Ruthwik, Shabita, Ansh. Welcome to the class, but I had a lot of questions that you had are the questions I am going to be covering in this session. So hence, I did not take up in that particular class. So good evening, all-rounder. I can see Himanshu, Aditya, Deepak, Vivek, Danya, Sambit. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Now, please understand that this particular class is not a mentee class. This is not a mentee class. So there is absolutely no mentee today, but we are going to be solving some very, very tough questions for the Science Olympiads. So if you are somebody who is giving Anthe very soon, you are writing your NSO, which is if on or before of 17th of October or any of the dates that are happening in November and December, let me tell you that this right here is going to be very, very important, right? So whoever is going to be here with me, please understand that today we are not just going to solve questions, but this is from your demand that you wanted to have Olympiad classes, you wanted to have concept classes. So we found a way to collaborate the concept class along with some questions, yes? So we are going to be doing some tough questions. We are going to be learning concepts. So I hope you are all ready for this class. Yes, if you are, please make sure that you hit the like button on this video and stay with me till the end, right? Please stay with me because trust me, the kind of questions we are going to solve today is going to be super duper interesting. So I welcome all of you. Good evening. The voice is not cutting because of any other reason. It's just my voice. I'm not well today. So I may take it down a notch. I might talk a little softly than I normally do. But everybody, please be ready. Yes? Now, for those of you who are asking for Ante practice paper, we are doing that tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8 p.m., we are going to be doing grade 8 Ante practice paper. So do not forget to hit the like button. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button on the channel as well. So now, of course, when you are coming to this class especially, right? When you are coming to this class, make it a point. You have your notebooks and your textbooks open. You have your stationery ready with you. Have your water bottle ready with you. And of course, be in a quiet place to focus. See, today we are not only going to be covering questions, but we will also cover chapters. We will do quick summaries also, right? So we are going to be doing quick summaries as well, which is why I request all of you to make it a point that you are at a quiet place. Now many of you will tell, Are ma'am, um, dinner khana hai hai, or ma'am, I'm very sleepy. I know it's uh, the class is happening a little late in the night. In case if you want to have dinner, have it side by side as you are watching the class because I will always request that don't skip dinner. But ideally, I hope you would all had dinner already and you're here for the class, right? Okay. Now very importantly, students, there is no mentee today, right? So whoever will come later on in the class and spam in class asking for mentee, aaj mentee nahi hone wala hai. Yes? Now next up, I know that now today when I'll be taking the class, maybe my energy might be a little lower than normal because I'm not keeping well. So make it a point that you're in class. You are at high energy level. Yes? I will see. Today I'm taking a concept class. On Thursday, again, see, normally I take classes at Thursday 8 p.m. So this coming Thursday at 8 p.m., I will be doing a mentee session. So like I always tell you, first and foremost, learn the concept. Then you play mentee. Okay? Now, most importantly, avoid saying that I am ignoring because when I teach in class, you know that I'm focusing on teaching and making sure that all of you are paying attention. Right? So avoid saying that I'm ignoring in class because absolutely I am not ignoring. And I had to start the class a little late because the presentation that I had with me was not working properly. And I did not want to give you a bad experience. See, I would rather 
delay the class a little bit rather than give you a bad experience you waited for the experience where you wanted to learn high quality right have concept clarity that's why you are here in my class so that means that when i when you come to this class you should be able to get what you are expecting right which is why i hope that all of you are ready for the class yes okay now of course everybody very quickly all of you are excited to be the like leaders so who wants to be the like leader for today's class now those of you who don't know what is a like leader a like leader is somebody i appoint in class who is responsible for making sure that we hit our like target for the day right so many of you are excited for this i know purvi was the like leader once right Purvi was a like leader once. I know Purvi, so we'll have to wait a little bit. No, we have to give others a chance. Now I see many of you are also there. Please tell me your real names. Don't use all this other. See one one person's name is random guy. What is random guy? Tell me your name. Wow, Ansh, very deep. Amruta, ठीक है. Fine. So I have randomly picked Shubhangi. so i have shug bhangi and amruta who is going to be today's like leaders okay see now you know that across every class i will appoint new new like leaders right so every day somebody will get a chance so don't worry about it but jaldi se go ahead and let's have at least 100 likes on this video yuvika i remember you were a like leader once right i remember you were a like leader once which is why i want to make sure that everybody gets a opportunity and if you like these olympiad classes and you want one for mathematics let me know in the comments below i will let arsh ma'am know as well theek hai so now many of you who are there who are writing the science olympiad see for anthe we have given you a detailed in information but if you are writing science olympiad then of course science olympiad is happening starting from 17th of october and for classes between 5th to 10th you see that you have logical reasoning achiever section and science now here of course from science alone you will get about 35 questions and you will get 35 marks from this portion 15 marks from the achiever section 10 marks for logical reason or aptitude yes okay so this is a little bit about science olympiad now moving on to the syllabus as you can see for section 2 you have your entire science syllabus so mainly today we will focus now on analyzing some of the previous year papers today as you all know we will look at microorganisms crop production management we have covered conservation of plants reproduction we have cell as well although cell has been deleted from the rationalized syllabus some concepts of cell is applied in microorganisms then of course we have the reaching the age of adolescence chapter also so we will take it part by part don't worry but today we will focus on two very important chapters right two chapters from which even in achiever section ansh in your normal science questions and in the achiever section some of the questions that i have repetitively observed or from the chapters from which it repetitively comes from is microorganisms and reproduction chapter so these are two chapters for which i will give you some extra information and of course whatever extra topics come from the tougher concepts right lot of examples come in the exam lot of uh, names come in the exam so i'll make you familiar with all of these things okay so don't worry now what i want you to do is to make sure you have your notebook ready so you'll write down whatever i teach you today theek hai are we ready see cell chapter has been deleted from ncert but we will do cell questions also so see i don't want to bombard everything at one go now if i teach everything at one go today your brain will explode you will tell ma'am olympiad nahi dena anthe nahi dena so today i have also taken questions and topics which will also not only help you for nso but olympiad as well yes <coughs> okay so shall we get started are we all ready so first and foremost in the next 15 to 20 minutes right 15 to 20 minutes me shall we all quickly revise reproduction chapter yes shall we all first do a quick summary of reproduction in animals chapter and once we have covered this particular topic we will start solving the questions how about we do that so that when we solve the questions we will then know the concept also right many of you are telling me ma'am 
आई डोंट नो दिस चैप्टर सो फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स तो आई विल क्विकली टीच यू द चैप्टर एंड देन वी विल गो अहेड एंड वी विल सॉल्व राइट नाउ अनुष्का इवन इफ यू डोंट नीड इट यू क्विकली लिसन टू माई समरी इट विल डेफिनेटली बी हेल्पफुल येस यू विक आई रिमेंबर यू बट आई रिक्वेस्ट यू नॉट टू स्पैम ठीक है ओके so let's get started everybody with the chapter reproduction in animals now when we talk about reproduction right i always tell you now whenever we talk about reproduction there's always a little bit of um, oh reproduction and there's a little bit of taboo around this topic but it's important to understand what is reproduction now over a period of time on earth right on earth if i rewind back say 100 years yes if i go back 100 years or let me make this 1000 years if i go back 1000 years will i find human beings will i find human beings yes or no if i go back thousands of years ago right maybe 1000 years back or 2000 years back will i find human beings right will i find humans i am not asking specifically will you find me thousands of years ago i am asking in general if i go thousands of years back yes somebody is saying no who is telling no ma'am we won't find humans thousands of years back if we are here in if we are in 2000 and i rewind back thousand of years ago i am in the year 1000 right 1000th year let's assume i won't find human beings is it i won't find humans i will find human beings maybe maybe not in the way i am right maybe not the way i am or the way we are or the way human beings are right now but we will find humans at some point right similarly if i go a 500 years ahead let's assume i go 500 years ahead will i find human beings in the 1500s will i find humans absolutely right in the 1500s also i will find humans now does this mean that the same human being same human being who lived in the year 1500 1700 1900 right do you think the same human being is living yes or no is the same human being living through all of this yes or no in the year 1500 1700 1900 same human being is living 200 300 years no we know that every living organism right so when you talk about a living organism we know that they have a set life span now what do i mean by that life span is basically the time that is there between the birth of a living organism to the death of a living organism now this time period that is there could in our case is between 60 to 70 years in some case up beyond 70 till 90 years right with the help of advancement in healthcare but average is between 60 70 80 yes so now we see that if the average life span is only 60 70 80 years how do we find human beings across different time time periods i would say that is because it is not the same human but the ability that this living organism is able to continue its species right or it is able or the species is able to continue maybe the same organism is not continuing but the species is continuing so that is what we call as reproduction so simply put reproduction can be defined as the process by which living organisms right so we see that it is the process by which living organisms produce young ones of their own kind right so this is what we understand as reproduction now why should any living organism right why should any living organism produce right why is any living organism reproducing they are reproducing because they need to continue their species right for the continuity of generations now what do i mean by that let's assume right we have an organism x yes we have an organism x and we see that there are 10 such organisms okay they are 10 in number so we see that there is an organism x and it is 10 in number which means right that over a period of time if this organism x keeps reproducing maybe in the year after hundreds of years or maybe 200 years this organism will still exist 
But let's assume that all these 10 organisms, right? All of these 10 organisms decide that no, I will not reproduce. I will not make a young one. I will not make a baby, right? If they all decide that they will not reproduce. I have a question. Will they all die? Will they all die? Yes. Are they all going to die? I will do that, Yuvika and Aarti. I will do that. Don't worry. I'll do that. Okay. Will they all die if they do not reproduce? That is a question again, right? That's a question for all of us. Will they all die if an organism does not reproduce? Absolutely not. It is not going to die. See, an organism X, if it does not reproduce, right? If an organism X does not reproduce, not that this organism is going to die. But rather, what do we see? We see that there, this species as X will not survive, right? This species X will no longer survive. And we see that eventually 100, 200 years, they will no longer be there. So if there is an organism X and X does decides that I will not or this X decides that this person or this organism is not going to reproduce, then nothing is going to happen. But over a period of time, what do we see? The species that is there will not survive. Yes. So that is the answer behind this. Now, have we understood the basic concept of reproduction? Have we all understood what is reproduction and why reproduction is essential? We are all clear, right? Ma'am, how come first one came on earth without reproduction? See, the first cell that was formed, right? The first cell was formed when various components came together and they aggregated. Now, ultimately, reproduction is nothing but a series of chemical processes that happen. So, over a period of time, when we learn later on, when you learn cell chapter, you will realize that Today, the way it is happening was not how it happened earlier. The processes that used to take place was in the basic concept of cell that was there, right? Okay. So now that we are clear with this, right? We are all clear. Very quickly, we are all clear. Now, I request you all that in the live chat, especially a lot of unnecessary comments coming my way. Let me tell you, this is a science class, right? This is a science class. Please keep that in mind and make it a point that you all unnecessarily don't disrupt the class yes see how did the first human being arrive now this is a very interesting question but the first human arrived over a series of evolution right now when you talk about evolution and all of those concepts you learn that in your higher grade and there's a very interesting video that i've done on human evolution on the channel you can watch that so we've actually arise from ancestors who looked right so over a period of time, organisms have modified and we are able to see so many different kinds, right? Yes. Darshan, you think that that's a very um, smart comment to pass? But see, that is a natural process and there is un there's no need to have this hoo hoo ha ha about reproduction. Let me tell you that. Now, I will catch hold of kids who are going to unnecessarily say things in class because you think it's cool to say that. Don't make others uncomfortable. We are here to learn about it. This is the scientific process. There is no need to taunt in class. And if you want to taunt, you can get out of my class. Yes? Okay. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is going to be modes of reproduction. Right? There are going to be modes of reproduction. What are the different modes of reproduction? We see that the different modes, we see that are of two kinds. We have asexual reproduction and we have sexual reproduction. Now, what is the need to have asexual and sexual mode? Now, understand, right? Understand that over a period of time, now we know, right? We know that there are tiny microscopic organisms, right? So we know that there are tiny microscopic organisms or tiny organisms which are not visible to the naked eye. So there are some very tiny organisms. And we know that these organisms are very simple in their body, right? Now when I say simple in, in their body, if you take amoeba, okay? If you take an amoeba, does amoeba have a heart? Does amoeba have um, kidney? Does an amoeba have a digestive system? No, right? 
we know that in this particular case we know that an amoeba that is there is a simple structure it does not have any of this right it does not have any of this which is why in this case right we see that in tiny organisms it's not that just because they don't have certain organ structures they will they cannot they are also living organisms so they also have to reproduce right so because they have to reproduce we see that they resort to a type of reproduction which we call as asexual reproduction while on the other hand in advanced organisms right in advanced organisms we see that there is sexual reproduction that takes place so let's say in dogs in cats human beings these are all examples of sexual mode of reproduction okay alpha gaming you think you're very funny with this it's not funny nobody's laughing so pay attention now of course right let them ask ignore them now of course when we talk about these two modes right in asexual reproduction we see that only one parent is involved right so we see that there is only one parent that is involved while on the other hand in whereas in sexual reproduction we see that there are two parents which are involved or rather right rather what do we see we see that there is a male and a female which is involved so two parents yes while on the other hand we see that this single parent so in asexual mode what do we observe in asexual mode we observe that this single parent only right so let's take the example of amoeba this single parent will undergo various changes within its body and it will end up producing daughter cells or it will produce its young ones right so here the parent is only undergoing changes within itself it is not producing any specialized cells for reproduction right so we see that <clears throat> we see that it does not produce any specialized kind of cells for reproduction so we say that we can say that no specialized one minute no specialized cells produced for reproduction parent is only undergoing certain changes yes now we see that in this particular case because the parent is only undergoing changes no we see that in this particular case we observe right we observe that the daughter or i will say the young one right the young one is identical it is identical to the parent so these are all some characteristics about asexual reproduction yes now here we see that in the case of amoeba the parent amoeba will split in such a way that it will produce two offsprings so because a single cell is splitting into two we call it as binary fission while in the case of yeast or in the case of hydra what do we observe we see that in this particular case in the parent we see that there is a outgrowth so in the parent's body there will be an outgrowth something which is growing outside it is protruding outside the body so we call it as a outgrowth and this is what we call as a bud right so we see that we call this as a bud which is why in this case this bud will eventually undergo maturation process and of course we see that it will detach and become a young one so let's quickly understand this in binary fission so to quickly to summarize in binary fission we see that as a single parent it is binary fission is a type of asexual mode of reproduction where a single parent will undergo certain changes and it will split into two right it will undergo various changes within its body such that it can split now it is not that the parent will divide half and half when i say that it will produce or undergo internal changes we see that everything inside the parent it will make a copy so when it splits it's making basically making a xerox copy of itself and then it will split right now you imagine if you want to take notes from your friend will you tear her notes will you tear all her notes and say okay these are my notes will you do that yes will you say that if you want to take notes from me will you tear all my notes and take it and go what will you do right what will you do you are going to do what if you want notes from your friend you will make a copy of it now how will you make the copy 
you will make a copy either by writing the notes down or you will take a Xerox copy of it, right? So similarly, when the parent is splitting, not like parent will divide half and half because inside for the cell to survive or the organism to survive, there are various components, right? Which is why in this particular case, what do we observe? We observe that there is a copy of the cell made and then it will split into two. So this is what we call as binary fission. While budding on the other hand is when there is a outgrowth. Okay? Mish too, bacha, see if you are not able to study from me, I completely understand. Various kids understand from different teachers. You do not need to unnecessarily come and spread hate in class. No, if you are not able to understand, I am not forcing you to sit in my class. Nobody is forcing you. Okay? So I request you all to unnecessarily not do that. If you want to spam, you can get out. If you want to study, sit in my class. I am spending a lot of energy in making sure that all of you understand. So I request that kind of energy from all of you as well. Bashu, I will answer your doubt as well. See, transgenderism that is there is basically... See, gender-wise, there is only male and female, right? Scientifically, so far, that is what is proven. But at times, right? At times, what do we see? There are some people who may identify otherwise, right? So they may identify elsewise. This could happen due to multiple reasons, right? Now, when, say, a naturally born male is able to identify, maybe feels like a female or identifies in the opposite gender, then we call that as transgenderism. Yes? Okay. Awesome. Mishtu Bacha, if you want to spam, you spam. I am unaffected. Moving on to the next one, which is sexual reproduction. So now we understand an asexual reproduction. So, so far to summarize, in asexual reproduction, what did we observe? In asexual reproduction, there is only one parent involved. There are no reproductive cells produced. Right? So we see that there are no reproductive cells. And then, of course, we see that the daughter or the offspring, right? The offspring is identical to the young one. Yes? So we see that the offspring is identical to the young one. Now, on the other hand, we have sexual reproduction. Now, don't go hoo hoo hee hee, okay? There's nothing about it. All this that is there is... It's biological and normal. There's nothing for all of you to feel like it is some very uh, next level thing. If you're feeling that way, then it's unnecessary. Let me tell you that. Next up, we have sexual reproduction. Now, what is sexual reproduction? Sexual reproduction that is there is basically when two parents are involved, right? Or rather, I would say there is a male and a female. Now, of course, when a male and a female is involved, right, we see that when I say that they are involved in reproduction, how are they involved? They produce certain specialized cells in their body, right? We see that they produce certain specialized cells which are called as reproductive cells, yes? So, we see that they produce reproductive cells and we call these reproductive cells as gametes. So, in this case, what do we observe? We see that there is a male gamete and we see that there is a female gamete. So, these reproductive cells need to be produced and these reproductive cells are what come together at the end of the day. The reproductive cells are what come together in order to produce the offspring. Now, this offspring is formed as a result, right? So, we see that they are formed as a result of a male and female gamete coming together, right? So, when they are formed, we see that this will not be identical to one parent. It will have some characteristics from the father, some from the mother, right? So, we can say that it is similar to the young one. Now, how are these gametes formed? So now we've understood that some specialized cells, right? So we see that there are specialized cells which are involved. So some, some part of the body has to produce these cells, no? Some part of the body has to produce these reproductive cells. So that is where the reproductive system comes into the picture. So there is a male reproductive system and a female reproductive system. Now, in the male reproductive system, we see that there is a main reproductive organ called as testis. And this testis is what produces the male gamete. And this male gamete is what we call as the sperm, right? Now, we also see that there is an external genitalia to, through which the sperms are released. While on the other hand, we see that in the female reproductive system, there is the ovary, right? Which is the 
which produce which is the main reproductive organ in females and we see that it produces the female gamete or the ova or the ovum or the egg yes yes i will do that vashu i will do that i'll do that very quickly students i don't understand the hoo hoo ha ha about all this but anyway right now of course we see that once the sperms are released through the external genitalia they enter into the female reproductive tract they swim upwards and they reach a pear shaped organ which is the uterus now we see that through the uterus the sperms would then swim all the way up into these tube like structures called as fallopian tube now the egg is also released by the ovary and we see that the egg and the sperm will fuse and this process of fusion is what we call as fertilization the process of fusion of egg and sperm resulting in the formation of a single cell structure called as zygote is what we call as fertilization yes so now this is what we understand by this now of course we see that because this process of fusion is taking place internally inside the female body we call this as internal fertilization so in birds um, you know in some most of the birds in the case of mammals right many of you are asking about elephant dog in all these cases fertilization is internal then of course we also see that in mammals then in some cases in some insects fertilization is internal while in some cases it could be external now what do i mean by external it means that the process of fertilization happens outside the body like in the case of fishes and in the case of frogs we see that sperms and eggs are released outside into a medium like water and fusion happens there and then development takes place yes so far are we all clear are we all clear yes or no are we all clear i need you to give me a quick thumbs up or have we all drifted away saying ma'am we are in our own world we are all in our own world just unnecessarily spamming and troubling others those who have paid attention in my class know what i am teaching let me tell you that birds mate sexual reproduction we see that there are male birds female birds okay awesome if you pay attention to me i am telling you this is easy only right so now what have we understood we know that in sexual reproduction there is fusion of sperm and egg resulting in the process or it results in the formation of zygote now this zygote is a single cell structure so it will undergo development right it will undergo development resulting in the form of embryo now once the embryo is formed we know that it has to now develop further now in order for development to happen we see that it will get implanted right we see that it will get embedded in the walls of the uterus and we call this process as implantation right so we call this as implantation where further development will happen resulting in the form of fetus and finally when it's fully developed we see that the fetus would be or the infant is delivered so in this case if you see what do we understand in the case of human beings we observed that fertilization is internal that means it is happening inside the body and along with that we see that development is happening internally and the organism or the female is giving birth to the young one such organisms which give birth to their young ones is what we call as viviparous animals or viviparous organisms while in those organisms where development of the young one right if development of young one happens inside eggs then we call this as oviparous organisms right viviparous organisms give birth oviparous lay eggs are we all clear i hope you are now last but not the least in external fertilization and especially in the case of frogs in the case of butterflies in the case of silkworms um silk moths silkworms and silk moth we also see that there is a process called as metamorphosis right now what is metamorphosis metamorphosis is when there is a drastic change so we see that there is a drastic change or drastic transformation that takes place from young one 
to the adult right so in the case of the frog what do we observe frog is found under water right initially it is in the form of a tadpole which has gills and it has you know fins and it is swimming while on the other hand right as it grows it undergoes some trans drastic transformation and it becomes a frog which is now able to survive on land as well which is why in this case we see that the correct answer or this is what we understand as metamorphosis yes okay ma'am in human being sexual reproduction takes place yes okay so now i've given you a quick brief on this chapter right only for this chapter i took some time because i've not taught this chapter for all of you now how does an embryo develop now in our in the case of humans right the embryo development takes place because once it gets implanted to the uterus right so now the uterus is part of the female body so it gets nutrients it gets food it is taken care by the female's body so a lot of nutrients gases all of that is provided by the female body thereby it will grow right growth will happen eventually limbs are formed and development takes place yes Ma'am, in what way do they fuse, right? What ways do they fuse? So basically, the nucleus will come together and they will become one, right? ठीक है. Now we'll go on to question. Now you all solve questions, all right? Okay. X and Y are two animals. Both X and Y undergo internal fertilization, but X lays eggs while Y gives birth to young ones. what holds true for x and y you have four options from which you need to give me the correct answer so i have my laptop with me so i will run the polls from my laptop right ruturaj mishtu many kids in class requesting you all to not use bad language Okay, this is not from Lakmir Singh. This is from NSO 2022. That means that these are previous previous year questions. Let me quickly open. Ma'am, will you teach in today's class? I am not teaching cell C. If I start teaching all the chapters and I start at eight o'clock, no, we will never finish on time. So I have taken two very important chapters. Uske baad we will go ahead. So just give me one moment I'll just add the polls. Okay. Because in this I want to check how much you have understood. So the poll is live all of you. You can give me the answer. Now from this I'll also be able to moderate the chat. Okay. It's there in Lakmir Singh also. Amazing if it is there in Lakmir Singh. Meanwhile, like leaders, I hope you are doing your job, and I hope you made at least one fifty likes. We have not even hit hundred likes, so jaldi jaldi go ahead and give me the answer. Okay. So now, as you all give me the answer to this, let's have a look on how to solve. So here, as you can see, we see that there is X and Y. and they are saying that both undergo internal fertilization okay that means that fertilization is happening internally but what else is given to us we see that in this case right we see that x lays eggs right so if x lays eggs then what kind of an animal is x what kind of an animal is egg x is it oviparous or viviparous Utkarsh, no, but chat today I am not teaching. O V Paris or V V Paris? What will be the answer to this? An animal or an organism that is going to lay eggs, right? We call this as O V Paris. Why? It says Y gives birth to young ones. So it says Y here gives birth to young ones. So giving birth. we know that this is bb paris now keeping this in mind let's have a look at the options now many of you here if i look at the options the statement says which holds true and many of you here have voted for option d now in this particular case the process of parturition parturition is nothing but another name or another 
scientific term for child birth right so we see that it is a process of child birth which takes place in x while the process of brooding brooding is nothing but a process right it is a pattern we see in egg laying animals especially wherein we see that they incubate they sit on the eggs right so normally how many of you we have seen in cartoons no in the nest normally the birds no when the eggs are there we see that the mother bird will normally be seen sitting and incubating right incubating so we would have seen that right so this is something that we observe so brooding is what we understand by that. So this is incorrect because X is oviparous. They have interchanged it. So this is false, right? So this particular statement is false. Now moving on to the next one. Young ones of both X and Y look different. Young ones of both X and Y that is here look different from the parent. Okay, we can consider this. While on the other hand, young ones of both X and Y undergo metamorphosis to transform. We can't say that. No, we don't know what is what. So this we cannot entirely consider. While on the other hand, animal X could be crocodile while Y could be a dog. That is true, right? So this is more or less that we can consider. Which is why in this case, we see that the correct answer that is there is option D. Yes? Zygote is the single cell structure right zygote is the single cell structure that is formed as a result of fusion of male and female gametes Ansh. i hope now you are clear so many of you here got the answer correctly right many of you got it correctly now in this case although we know you could you would tell me ma'am young ones of x and y look different they are not entirely different they are similar right so you can't say they are different because different means it could also be interpreted as if there is a dog, there is a kitten. That's not the case. They look similar is the more appropriate word. Yes. Just be tomorrow we are having the class for class 8. So don't worry. Right. Okay. Now shall we move on? Many of you have got this correctly. So well done. Okay. Good. Now let's move on to the next question. Ma'am, you are saying oviparous lay eggs and female body is viviparous. What is zygote? What? Ma'am, you are saying oviparous lays eggs and female body. See, basically, when you say egg, right? In the egg, we see that the zygote or the embryo is there. But the development that is there of that embryo is happening inside a hard calcareous shell right? It's in the case of birds, it's a hard calcareous shell. So that is why although fertilization or formation of zygote takes place, they lay eggs where further development of the young one happens. So I hope now you are clear. Yes? Metamorphosis, I will explain with this particular question, right? Okay. Now you have a Venn diagram given to you, right? You have a Venn diagram given to you where there is an organism which undergoes internal fertilization, and of course, there's an organism which undergoes metamorphosis, that is X. Now, Y is an organism which can undergo metamorphosis and can undergo external fertilization. So, based on this, what is the organism? What could X and Y be? Very quickly, what could X and Y be? The poll is going to come to all of you right now. What is X and Y? Take your time and answer. Those of you who are watching this video much after the live stream, pause it and then try to answer it yourself. Okay. Lifespan of a microorganism, it differs, right? It differs from organism to organism. Very quickly, ma'am, what amoeba becomes small and small. Arti, that is why we see that amoeba will make a copy. So in order to maintain its composition, it will make a copy in itself, right? It's done, Vashu, it is done. So Arti, amoeba won't become small and small. Okay. Very, hello, Shriya, hello. Ma'am, halwa question. Yeah, this is easy. So, we know that an organism that undergoes internal fertilization and can perform metamorphosis. Simply put, if you look at X, right? 
we know that frogs fishes and all we know that external fertilization takes place so you can eliminate a and b immediately now you are left with butterfly and starfish now in this also you can eliminate your starfish so very simply if you put an organism which undergoes metamorphosis what is metamorphosis it is a process by which a young one right or i will say a larva will undergo drastic changes right it will go dra undergo drastic changes such that we see that it will become an adult or it will undergo some drastic transformation which is why or we call this process as metamorphosis how to identify if an organism performs internal or external reproduction you will have to remember the examples but normally right normally one thing you need to know is that especially in organisms which are found under water like fishes frogs we see that it is external fertilization right so in this case from the four options that we have here correct answer here is option c butterfly and frog so i can see here that many of you have got the correct answer so well done all of you well done moving on to question number 3 on your screens now so we have an image given to us which is the male and female reproductive systems which we have just seen now refer the given figures and select the incorrect statement regarding them so from these four options can you tell me which is the incorrect statement now those of you who are not able to solve the questions or those of you who have not understood first and foremost i request all of you to read through the chapters when you come for these classes right so i'm sure that when you read the chapter you watch the one shot you will be able to answer now i'm going to step outside so that you see the images clearly yes okay so now i can see that many of you here are voting for option a now there's a competition happening between option a option b option c yes i'm there i just went to take a sip of water i will teach you genetics don't genetics now only ld genetics for class 10th all the best for your ant exam i hope you do well or i hope you do really well ma'am it's not clear pay attention when i'm teaching you no please okay now let's have a look now the images given to us was that of female reproductive system and male reproductive system so x right here is the vast difference of the sperm duct right that transports the sperms then we have p which is the testes and then of course we have r which is the uh, external genitalia of males which is the penis yes now on this side we have y which is cervix which is the birth canal this right here is the vagina which is the female reproductive tract w is ovary and x right here is the fallopian tube right so we have identified all this now based on this right it's you have to identify which is the incorrect statement look at option a it says that z what is z it is the organ which receives the sperm true right it receives the sperm that fertilizes the ovum in x so it is saying that ovum in x so this right here is true what is x fallopian tube where does fertilization happen in fallopian tube right so now of course this is something that is aware that we have learned right now next up it says b b says that secretions of q and y what is q and y q is the sperm duct Y is the cervix helps in development of male and female gamete is this statement correct can we say that q which is just a sperm duct that helps in transporting sperms is secreting substances no 
it is not but rather if we talk about development of male and female gametes development of male and female gametes happens inside the main reproductive organ right it happens inside the main reproductive organ that is the ovum ovary and the testis so in this case as you see here the incorrect statement is option b while on the other hand both other statements are correct what is this universe existence see i don't today i don't have the energy to deal with this i really don't that's why i mean, i kind of don't care if you are going to ask me some inappropriate questions okay yes of course sampath elephants also reproduce okay awesome got it ma'am i misread the question no problem see i know many of you are not able to solve for two reasons one you have not paid attention while teaching when i was teaching the concept in case if you missed the concept that i taught what i would request is you go back and rewind it okay just go back and rewind and watch the one shot and read the chapter also right read the chapter once so that it becomes easy for you to understand and most importantly if you are giving olympiad exams no this particular chapter is very important that's why i took some time with this chapter yes so we are all clear thank you so much yes i i will not be able to teach you class 11 but i'll teach class 10th right ma'am what is viviparous viviparous are organisms that give birth to young ones yes ma'am meaning of fuses fuses means to combine it will become one theek hai okay now we will move on to microorganisms friend and foe now we have all done this chapter in detail right we have all done this chapter in detail microorganisms friend and foe how many of you are confident with this chapter ma'am easy peasy chapter we have nothing to worry about right is chapter may we know everything we have learned the chapter we have read the one shot we have you know gone ahead and solved so many questions now for olympiad purpose what you need to know is you need to learn examples right so you have to learn a lot of examples from this chapter which is why i'll spend some time on giving you examples because there will be questions which will be based on that and most importantly they will ask you on diseases and they will ask you on examples theek hai so quickly i will revise some of the important topics all right so now microorganisms we know are tiny organisms that are invisible to the naked eye or we require a microscope to observe them now we know that broadly we don't have one type of microorganism but we have various kinds of organism so we have bacteria fungi algae bi- protozoans which all come under the category of microorganisms then we have viruses which cannot literally be called as a living organism right we know that we cannot literally call it as a living organism but we know that it is microscopic in nature yes now when you look at this particular chapter there are some examples that we need to know i am not going to summarize all the chapters okay i am only looking at this chapter because i'm teaching you the extra things that will help you ace your olympiads right so today i will only cover important olympiad concepts okay now when we talk about type of microorganisms so first up we have bacteria right now bacteria that are there are basically single celled organisms so we see that they are single celled organisms which means they are made up of only one single cell and we see that they have a cell wall right and we see that this cell wall that is there is made up of <coughs> is made up of a certain structure called as peptidoglycan this is some extra information for all of you now we see that they don't have a structure called as nucleus but rather we see that they have a place which we call or a place where the genetic material is found which we call as nucleoid region so what do we observe here we see that it has a specific structure right we see that it has a place where the genetic material is found concentrated and this is what we call as a nucleoid region now along with this we see that because it does not have a well defined nucleus we say that it is a prokaryotic cell yes so we say that it is a prokaryotic cell 
Now, this bacteria can come in different shapes, right? Bacteria can be rod shaped. If it is rod shaped, we call it as bacillus. It can be sphere shaped. If it is sphere shaped, we call it coccus. And if it is slightly comma shaped, we call it as vibrio. And if it is spiral shaped, we will call it as spirilla or spirulum. So these are the four shapes of bacteria that we observe. So these are shapes of bacteria. Now you need to know some examples, right? So some examples of bacteria which may help you in knowing if you know the disease causing ones also they are helpful. So normally we know that there are some helpful bacteria like lactobacillus and we know that rhizobium, right? These are all examples of helpful bacteria. But we also know that there are some harmful bacteria also, right? So there are some harmful bacteria. So we know that there is mycobacterium tuberculosis so everybody write this down with me mycobacterium tuberculosis which causes tuberculosis then we have pneumonia pneumonia is a disease which is caused by streptococcus streptococcus species then you have tetanus which is caused by clostridium species right now next up we have citrus canker. Citrus canker is a plant disease which is caused by Xanthomonas citri. Then typhoid is there which is caused by Salmonella. Salmonella, yes. So it's caused by the Salmonella species. Now remember, right, remember these names. Now you can't remember the whole thing. But if you hear words like streptococcus, if you hear words like mycobacterium, salmonella, xanthomonas, clostridium, if you hear all this, then you know, right? Know that all these are going to be bacteria, okay? Similarly, next up we have fungi, right? Now what are fungi? We know that fungi that are there can be unicellular in nature or it could be multicellular, right? We see that it has a cell wall which is made up of chitin, and some examples of fungi can include rhizopus, yeast. It can include penicillium notatum because a lot of antibiotics are obtained from fungi. Yes, tetanus is caused by bacteria. Okay, ma'am. In Olympiad exams, main type of microorganisms we have to, we have say four or five. Yes. No, they won't ask you how many microorganisms are there in Olympiad. They'll ask you application based, right? So they'll ask you that. Now, the most tricky part in Olympiad, which I will cover very soon, is the protozoa part. Now, protozoans are unicellular organisms and they are eukaryotic. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that these guys have a well-defined nucleus, right? So, we see that they have a well-defined nucleus. So, they are eukaryotic. Now, unlike cell wall that we see in bacteria or fungi, they have no cell wall, right? So, they have no cell wall. Now, some examples you need to remember of protozoa because most of the time, these examples of protozoa only come. So, we have plasmodium, we have uh, amoeba, paramecium, then we have uh, Leishmania, Trypanosoma, just one second, let me write that again, Trypanosoma, then of course you have something called as Giardia, then of course, huh, these are the broad examples. Now, one thing I will recommend is that all of you look at the images of these protozoans also, right? All of you go ahead and make make it a point that you are all uh, what do you say you are all looking at the images right images of these bacteria because they will definitely be helpful yes very good cell wall of fungi is made up of chitin i will answer the question in just some time yes okay so now these are examples you have to remember because I have gone through the PYQs and there are repeated questions that have come, right? There have been repeated questions which have come, okay? 
Now, again, last but not the least, we have algae as well. Now, in algae also, there is bolwax, clamidomonas. So, examples is something that you will all have to remember. Ma'am, how to remember all this? See, they will not ask you to sit and write examples. But I am saying that if you see these names, try to place it, right? Try to place it in the category. So, that way it is going to be helpful for all of you. Now, very quickly, right? Let's move on to the question. So, question number four. Question number four, all of you, we will learn more by solving more. So, this is again a PYQ which was given in the level two exam of NSO. Complete the analogy by giving the example. So, you have smut disease of wheat. So, this is a plant disease which is caused by a fungi. Now, can you identify which is a disease that is caused by bacteria? So, that is something you will have to identify. I will give you all a poll. Now, somebody was asking me, ma'am, how is this class helpful? If you are writing any competitive exam, if you are writing National Science Olympiad, you are writing ANTHE, any competitive exams that you are giving, this class is going to be definitely helpful. So, please don't feel like this class is not helpful. Okay. What is poll? You will have something on the live chat by which you will be able to answer. <coughs> See, microorganisms is a very scoring topic. And they made there are a total of 40 questions. Ma'am, NSO for class 7? Yes, I'll do it for class 7 also. Don't worry. Weightage of this chapter in exam. See, in your normal school exam, this chapter has a lot of weightage. But we also know, right? We also know that apart from this, right? Apart from this, in the uh, Olympiad also, normally I've seen that in Achiva section, it's either from microorganisms. So you'll normally have only one question from bio, okay? But you'll either have it from microorganisms or you'll have it from reproduction. I have seen that. Okay. So many of you here have given me the answer, right? Now I can see that many of you have given me the answer as option A. Awesome. See, smut disease of wheat is caused by fungus. Now, I always tell you, no, if the word rust is there, if the word rust is there, then trust me that it is a fungal disease, right? So, leaf rust, it could be brown rust or any other type of rust disease. It's caused by a fungal organism called as Puxenia. So, this is not, this is caused by fungi. Now, next up, we have tobacco mosaic disease. Tobacco mosaic disease. If mosaic is there, that means we know it's caused by a virus. Tobacco mosaic virus. So, absolutely not option D. What is rust? I'll show you a picture. I'll send it on Telegram. One of my plants at home has got rust disease. So, if this is a leaf, no, there will be brown brown spots. There will be brown brown spots on different parts of the plant. That means that the fungi is growing. Now, you're left with wilt disease and blight. Now, blight is normally, or potato blight is normally caused by a fungus-like organism, right? So, we see that it is caused by a fungus-like organism, which is why we see that wilt disease of potato is caused by a certain kind of bacteria. Now, many of you voted for rust disease of wheat. That is wrong. Correct answer here should be option C. So, are we all clear? I know example question, to pakka it will come in the exam. Ma'am is not saying that this is helpful. Ma'am not saying that this is not helpful. I am saying that what are we understanding? In the sense, I what are you understanding? My point is if I am revising these important topics with all of you, I am letting you all know, right? I am letting you all know what are the type of questions which will come in the Olympiad and if you are somebody who is aspiring, then this class is for all of you, right? Now I promised that I would do this particular class last week which is why I am here to help you all out. So are we all clear? Yes? Are we all clear? Okay. Very quickly. Ha ha. Class 6 also we will do. Don't worry. Ma'am, I'm still confused. Saroj, what are genes? Ma'am, gene, Saroj, genes that are there are basically certain fragments, right? There are certain fragments in our genetic material that have the information for a particular character. So, if I have black hair, 
That means that this information that Aishwarya should have black hair is present in the genes, right? Ma'am, fungus is bacteria. Are no. Fungus and bacteria are two different organisms. I hope you are clear. Yes. Chromatin. Very good. Technical definition is it's a functional segment of the DNA. But I did not. Ma'am, I just entered the class. That's why I was asking. So, um, Aratrik. Are very interesting name. Aratrik, I would recommend that you rewind this video and actually watch it in 2x. So that you watch it from the beginning. It will help you all out. Right? Okay. Now. Let's, awesome. So let's get started everybody. Tarana mom is here only. She's not gone anywhere. Why are you saying this? Okay. So let's go on to the next question. Question number five. So this is again a level one question from 2022. See, I've all picked recent questions. Now you have a table given to us where you have to identify P, Q, R and S. Then after that, you need to then identify which would be the correct option. So are we all clear? Okay. Okay. So now very quickly first tell me what is P, Q, R and S? First solve for P, Q, R and S and give me the answer. Yes. Can you all tell me? Can you all tell me what is P, Q, R and S? Or we all don't know what is P, Q, R and S. Ma'am, oh, yours is on 22nd December, is it? You have a lot of time, Ansh. Okay. Thank you, Aditya. Thank you. Very good. P is a protozoan. Fine. And somebody of, some men, so many of you have given me a specific answer. So P here is ant amoeba. See, I am not only telling you, right? See, I am not only telling you what is the question, what is the answer. I am also telling you how to solve. So whenever you have a table, whenever you have a diagram, step number one, label the diagram. Finish the table and then give the answer. Yes? So P here is protozoa, protozoan. Then what is Q? What is Q? Somebody has told me my mess is bacteria. Okay, by now you should know this. S is bacteria. Now R is contamination of cuts and wounds. Now Q and R we are stuck. Q and R we are stuck. We don't know what is Q. We don't know what is R. Okay. Ma'am, P can't, can't P be entamoeba? Yeah, you can write entamoeba or amoeba. Both are correct. Ma'am, S is bacteria. Ah, S is bacteria. Correct. R is tetanus. Very good. R is tetanus. Q is contact. Very good, Reshmi. Very good, others. Yes, very good. Ma'am, show points and use elimination method. And that is, of course, the best way to do. But you have to solve for PQRS. No, otherwise, how will you do? This is contact. So, this right here is contact. So in this case, go ahead and now give me the answer. I'll open the polls for all of you. See, now it becomes easy. Now people who still did not... Oh, one second, let me end the poll. Now, see, if I only come and tell you how to give what is correct answer, what is incorrect answer, then what are you learning? You're not learning how to solve, right? You have to learn how to solve as well. Very good. Now I can see that many of you are giving the answer. Thank you so much, Lakshita, for telling me that you are finding this helpful. If you want more such classes, see, now I, I took a detailed bit for microorganisms and for um, this one, reproduction. But I'll take more classes if you need me to do. And if you want all of us teachers to take classes, let us know. Pranjal, what did you not understand? Let me know. Felix, you are saying, ma'am, 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 but what? Ma'am, ka what? What do you want me to do? Can you take cell? I'll do that. So we'll do it in pieces, right? We'll do it in pieces so that at one go, right? Ma'am, can you say what is that slimy thing in larva? They normally, see in larva, larva, see normally egg cells have a slimy outer covering, right? Hello Felix, hello. Ma'am, everything. 
Pranjal, are you giving Olympiad exam? Can you tell me? Are you giving Olympiad exam? Ma'am, can I start preparation for need? Absolutely. You can if you want to. Oh, Aditi's brother's birthday and my birthday is on the same day. Okay. Now with this, many of you should get the correct answer. Now quickly, right? Quickly to explain once again. Amoebic dysentery is caused by entamoeba histolytica. Now entamoeba, if the word amoeba comes, then what is this? We know that this is a protozoan and we know that it is spread through infected or contaminated water and food. Yes? Now athlete's foot is caused by a certain fungus. Now how is it spread to people? We know that it can be spread from infected person to a healthy person. Now how can it be spread? It can be spread either, it can be spread through contact, right? Through physical contact. So in this case what do we see? We see that this right here is the answer. Now we have R, right? We see that R is a disease caused by a bacteria and it is normally, right? We see that it is normally spread or it can, it normally enters the body through cuts and wounds. So we know that tetanus that is there is an example of a disease. Now if, let's say a person A has tetanus, it will not be spread from A to B, right? It does not spread from one person to the other. But rather tetanus is spread either if there is, if, the, if this person has a wound, right? Then and if it comes in contact with soil and everything, then we see that this right here is how tetanus is spread. Then typhoid of course is caused by a bacteria. So from the four options that we have here, the option that current, correctly identifies, right? Is nothing but option C. Yes, where P is protozoa and R is tetanus. Very good. Many of you got this correctly. Many of you said S is fungi. Are typhoid is caused by a fungus of typhoid is caused by bacteria. No. Ma'am, is fungi a bacteria? No. Fungus is different. Bacteria is different. Yes. Thank you, Aratrik. Thank you so much. Ma'am, how can you tell me how to prepare for bio? Aratrik, how about I give you some tips towards the end of the class? Yes? Okay. Very good, all of you. Very, very good. Typhoid cannot be caused by virus. It can only be caused by bacteria. Okay. Now let's have a look at this particular question. Now you'll get a lot of these questions, okay, where a flowchart is given and then based on this flowchart, right, based on this flowchart, you have to give the answer. So how about you all solve this question first. We see that this is a microorganism, which is a eukaryote. Now if it is a eukaryote, if it says yes, then this is a microorganism, which has cells that contain chlorophyll. If its cell has chlorophyll, then the organism is called P, right? While if it does not have chlorophyll, right? If it does not have chlorophyll, then its wall, it is a eukaryotic organism whose walls are made up of chitin. So then it is Q, okay? Now keeping this in mind, can you all tell me what could be the correct answer here? How many of you want to solve this part first and then I'll show you the answer? Try to solve this first, okay? Try to solve it and then I will show you the options. Tell me when I have to so show the option. Tell me ma'am show options, I'll move to the next slide. Yes? Ma'am first this one, solve this one first. I know physics is tough but don't worry, don't worry. Ma'am what is tetanus? Tetanus is a disease which is caused by... Clostridium bacteria, Clostridium tetani, which normally affects the nervous, it affects the way our muscles work. Now the way our muscles work is regulated by the nervous system. But this tetanus may, this Clostridium tetani will secrete some toxins that will interfere with that. So there will be a lot of, uh, what do you say, the muscles will work haphazardly. They'll work on their own mind. It'll keep contracting, relaxing, right? Okay. Now I will show you the option so everybody the poll is live and those of you watching this video later you can solve it by yourself and move to the explanation. So everybody quickly go ahead and solve this question. I'll quickly drink water. All the best for your exams. All the best.
Yeah, my throat is not doing well today. So please don't mind my voice. Okay. So now many of you have given me very interesting answers. Now, how many of you did not read the fact that you need to select the incorrect option regarding P and Q? How many of you did not read the fact that we have to give incorrect answer? You have to identify, I mean not incorrect answer, how many, we have to identify which is the incorrect option. All, all the best Naman. I know, we are always in one hurry to answer. Nobody wants to read the question. I know this will happen. When I saw the poll results, I realized that you have all got the answer. You know how to solve. You know the answer. And you've been in a hurry that you made a silly mistake. And now you are just losing marks because you did not read the fact that it was incorrect. Now you can still change your polls. I mean, you can change your votes. Not a problem. I'll tell you, Disha. I will tell you. Quiz whiz. Yes, tetanus is a bacterial disease. Okay. Very good, everybody. Very good. So I'm going to get started with solving. Now we're talking about an organism which is a eukaryote. That means that this organism has a well-defined nucleus. Well-defined nucleus. So basically a eukaryote is an organism which has a well-defined nucleus. That means it is not bacteria. You cannot consider bacteria here because bacteria is a prokaryote. Yes? Now we are talking about an organism which has a well-defined nucleus. Now if it has a well-defined nucleus, its cells contain chlorophyll. Now which microorganism has the potential to have chlorophyll in it? We know some bacteria have chlorophyll in it like your cyanobacteria. But now we are talking only about eukaryotes. So P right here will be a algae, right? If it has chlorophyll then it is P. So it has chlorophyll, that means it is algae. But if it does not have chlorophyll, then we are talking about a eukaryotic organism which does no, ha, have no chlorophyll in it. That means it cannot prepare its own food. It has a cell wall and we see that this cell wall that is there is made up of chitin. So in this case, what do we see? Q is fungi. So we have identified P and Q, right? P that is there is going to be algae q is fungi now next up option a says that p could be an algae like volvox that means algae or an example of algae here is volvox this statement is true next p is a producer while q is a decomposer now if algae has the ability to make or synthesize food then it is a producer right it is producing the food while q is a decomposer we know that fungi grow on dead and decaying organism so it is a decomposer so this statement is also true now q could be an edible fungus like mushroom or it could be non-edible this is also true leaving us with what leaving us with saying that p could be unicellular or multicellular but q is always unicellular is fungi always unicellular? No, right? We have unicellular fungi which is yeast. But we also have multicellular fungi like, you know, mushrooms. We have rhizopus. So they are all examples of multicellular fungi. So in this case, the correct answer, the incorrect statement regarding P and Q is option D. So are you all clear with this question? Are we all clear? Yes? Now very quickly students, right, very very quickly to tell you what is eukaryotic and prokaryotic. I request you all to watch the, the cell session which I have shared on the community post, right. Now a eukaryotic cell is a cell which has a well defined, so there is a specific structure called as nucleus. So we say that they have a well defined nucleus. While in prokaryotic cells, what do we observe? We see that in this case, there is no such nucleus per se. The genetic material is found concentrated in one region. And we call this as nucleoid region, right? So in this case, what do we see? Such an organism is called as a eukaryote. And this is what we call as a prokaryote. Yes? Are we all clear? Are we all clear with this? Example. Here you have your examples would be any protozoan, any fungi, any algae, any plant, 
any animal, right? But in prokaryote, mainly it is your bacteria. Are we clear? Yes? Are we clear? Okay. So very good all of you. Very, very good. Now very quickly, I have a request to all of my students. Now I know we have four more questions. How many of us are feeling tired right now? Ma'am, nahi ho raha hai. Nuclear, ma'am, we are tired. Maybe we should do this in another day. Any of you feeling this way in the live class? Feeling tired? Maybe ma'am, some other day we can do. Or how about we finish it off? Ma'am, we are sitting here with you. 10 more minutes, we will finish it off, right? We'll finish it off. We are not feeling tired. What is it? I'm checking. Ma'am, little bit, not me. See, I've promised you 10 questions. So even if you are not able to fully understand right now, it's okay. If you want to take a break and watch the video later, you can watch it, not a problem. But wash your face, stretch your hands a little bit, drink some water. I'll give you a quick 2 minute water break. Jaldi, jaldi. 10 more minutes may it will be done. 10 more minutes and we are going to be done. Right? But take a 2 minute water break and shall we come back? 2 minutes water break. 2 minutes ka water break we will take. And we shall come back and resume. No? So in the meanwhile all of you stretch your hands. Stretch your body a little bit. Wash your face a little bit. We are not ending the class. Nobody say bye bye and go. We are not ending the class. I just, I'm giving you a short break, right? Chottu sa break and we'll be back. Yes? Okay, so students, we are done. We are energized, right? We are all energized. We are all ready to ace last few questions. Two minutes break we took and we are ready. We are energetic. We are not feeling lazy. Are we ready to ace it? How is the energy? Yes, I hope that the energy is high. Keep the energy ready. We are going to go on to the next question. Okay? No problem, Gajendra. No problem. At Aratrik, I'll send you the link. It's there in the community post, but I will put it here also. Right? Okay. Now we will move on to the next question. I will give you tips, Ara. Please don't spam. No problem, Anj. Come back and watch it. Okay. Pick the odd one out from each series. So you have five given to you. And from each series, you have to identify which is the odd one out. So everybody take your notebooks and pens, write this down and identify which is the odd one out in each. So for one, for two, for three, for everything you write it down. Now, especially in two places you will get confused. Option two and option four. So I will give you the important terms here when we do this because examples of fertilizer, weedicide, insecticides are very commonly asked in the examination. Ashish sir did not quit. Ashish sir is with us only. Just that Ashish sir is teaching in NEET channel right now. Okay. No problem technical gaming. No problem. Moving on. First one we have Moat, Dekli, Sprinkler System, Rahat. 
Everybody has given me the answer to this. This has to be ma'am sprinkler system. Okay. Now next one do we all know. Ma'am do we know what is the odd one out in all this. Right. Do we all know what is the odd one out. Any of us who are aware. Okay. Either ways. Right. Ma'am maybe second one. Okay ma'am. Technic urea. So I am getting some answers. Dysistone. Okay, silos. Third one is silos. Huh. Anushka very smartly has told me, ma'am, third one is silo. Looking different, right? Okay, second one, many of you are telling me between urea and disistone, dice right? So, we have urea and disistone. Okay. Now, third one, silos. What is the fourth one? Very good, right? Fourth one right here is hybridization. Very good. Now, what is the fifth one? Fifth one is where we will get stuck. 240, MCPA, Butaclor and BHC. Very good, very good. Theek hai. Ma'am, ab thak kahi hu. See, uh, Kaaba, if in case you are tired, I know, it's too long to sit in one go, come back and watch it. I'll not force you to sit in class. Come back and watch though, it'll be helpful. So we have BHC. This is what your answer is. Now that you've written this down, from the four options, can you tell me which is the correct answer? Can you tell me which here is the correct answer? Four options are here. Students watching this video later, you can give me the answer. Pause the screen and give me the answer. I will give you the poll and you can answer it to me. Okay. Now that you've identified, see now, the way I'm making you solve is the way you should approach. At least for one even if you don't know some of it, see in Olympiad, it's going to be very difficult where you will encounter some questions for which you don't know the answer. So try to attempt the question, right? Even if you don't completely solve, even if you solve half of this question, you will get the correct answer. Let me tell you that. If you get, even if you solve one part of this question, you will get the correct answer. So don't get scared when you look at such questions in the exam, right? Now I'll tell you where the trick comes. Anushka has got it, right? Technically, if you got the first one correctly, the answer is cakewalk. Answer is cakewalk. Rest of it you don't need to worry only, right? Because only one has the correct way of representation. Yes? Very good all of you. Very good. Many of you have voted. Now, we know that Mot, Dhekli and Rahat are all traditional methods of irrigation. While sprinkler system is a modern method. And if you think about it, there is only one option which has sprinkler system as one. So technically, if you got the first part, you don't even need to solve the remaining. They are all correct. Yes? Now, on the other hand, you have words like urea, disistone uh, di and all that. So here is a list that I would like you to take a screenshot of, okay? Now this is the list of fertilizers, okay? Or a list of examples of fertilizers, yes? So this is the first list that I'd like all of you to take. Now these are some examples of fertilizers. So there is urea, there is ammonium sulfate, then there is potash. Then there is DAP, right? DAP that stands for diammonium. Let me just write this down. Diammonium phosphate. Then there is CAN that stands for calcium, ammonium, nitrate. And then of course there is superphosphate, right? Just one second. Then there is superphosphate as well. So these are some list of examples, right? Yes, that's a very popular publication, which I would recommend that all of you follow because they have very good questions. I recommend that publication for sure. Yes. Now next, of course, we have BD sites, examples of BD sites. So next up, I'm writing this down. So here we have metachlor. Sorry, we have... Um, 2,4-D, my bad. Start with the easiest one. 
right? So we have 2,4-D, MCP, A, we have butaclor, right? These are all examples of VD sites that are there. Then above from that, there are simamazine. Wherever the word chlor comes, remember that it is a VD site, right? Then we have insecticides. Yes, last one we have insecticides. Yes, insecticides that are there include VHC, Dysiston, and then of course we have Malathion. So take a screenshot of this everyone. Everybody please take a screenshot because this will definitely come handy for all of you. Once you've taken the screenshot, let me know. We will move on. Okay? We will move on to the next part. Balasarati, I request you to watch all the classes. Sanya Kumari, what help do you need, Bacha? I missed your question. Okay. Malathion, oh, an extra E is there. Okay, ignore that. Very good. So take a screenshot because they will ask you questions based on this. So in this case, as you all know, you've all given me the correct answer. So as we know, the correct answer here is option B. Now we will go on to question number 8. Question number 8 is also a very simple flowchart given to us. Okay. A very simple flowchart given to us from which we see that it is a traditional method of irrigation. No. Then it is W. So what is W? We know that I am going to quickly solve to wind this up. So we know that this right here is going to be a modern method. Right. So we know that this right here is going to be a modern method. Now, if it is based off on pulley system, if it is based off on pulley system, then we know that it's normally the moat method that is there. It is based on pumps, then we know that it could be the chain pump method, right? If it's based on based on lever, then we know that it could be the Rahat method that is there. While if it is not, then we have the other one, right? Now, I solve that quickly for one reason. You have to identify the correct statement. Now, see, W, X, Y, Z. Understand that VW, X, Y, Z. So here, one thing you need to remember, right? So sorry, this right here is going to be, yeah. So now in this particular case, you need to identify which is correct. This is V, sorry. This right here is V. I'm just checking. This is V. Now based on this, give me the correct one, right? So very quickly, you have to look at the correct one. Now, I'll give you a simple trick. W is modern method, right? So, W here is modern method that is there. While the rest of it is traditional method. Now, this should be very direct. Very, very easy and direct. Yes? Can you all give me the answer? This is very simple, very easy, very direct. Okay. So in the meanwhile, I'll solve this for all of you, right? Now in this particular case, this of course was V. Now in this particular case, see actually it doesn't matter for the rest of it. All of these here are your traditional methods, right? Your traditional methods that are there will include mode system, which is also called as the pulley system, right? We know that there is chain pump system. We have daily system. And of course, we have Rahat system. Now, based on this, if you see, we know that W that is there is your going to be your modern method, right? Now, based on this, what do we see? It says that W causes water wastage. No, it does not cause water wastage. It says that X is a system which is used in sandy soil, while Y is used for water shortage. No, absolutely not. Because again, there was no specific way of deciding this, right? Now you have V. V says that V was again an example for a traditional method, which says that it involves pipes and it delivers water drop by drop. Not a modern method. Which is why the only correct one is Z that says that Z, whichever it be, is a system of irrigation used in the olden times, right? It was used in the olden times wherein we see that it is a traditional method. So correct answer here is option C. Now, of course, we will go on. This was very easy. It looked complicated, but it was simple. Now it is the last question because I'll give you question number 10 as homework. Select the following option that pairs endemic species of Panchmari Reserve. 
Now, endemic species are those species which are only found in the Panchmari, right? It is not found elsewhere, yes? So, they are specific to Panchmari Reserve, right? Now, which among the following are found there? Very easy peasy question. You have bison and flying squirrel. Then, of course, we see flying squirrel, snow leopard. Snow leopard is normally found in mountainous, Himalayan terrain. No. Asiatic lion and Himalayan weasel. No. Indian giant and snow leopard. No. By elimination method, you know that the correct answer is option A. So now this particular question is going to be a homework question for all of you, right? So this right here is going to be a homework question where I need you to tell me which is the correct, which statement here is correct with respect to different zones of a biosphere reserve, right? So I hope that all of you are ready to give me the answer. You have four options from which you need to give me the correct answer. Yes? Now, this is with respect to different zones of biosphere reserve. So, I would request that all of you read a little bit more about it, right? Now, I know many of you here are giving ANTE exam. Many of you here are giving Olympiads. Now, whenever you are preparing for these exams, let me tell you that it is best to start preparing one to months before the exam. Now, side by side, when you are studying, just learn the one or two extra points because it will definitely help you out. Yes? Now... If you want to prepare for your exam that's happening on 17th, it would be best that you go through some Olympiad bites, right? Now, there are amazing publications which are available like MTG, which provide amazing, um, amazing questions and Olympiad content. But along with that, if you want to have quick revision, ma'am, I cannot read the entire textbook. I want something which is quick and easy. Then you can definitely download the Baiju's app because in the app, we also have a section dedicated for competitive exams where a lot of explanation is available. Now, very important thing is that with respect to these kind of exams, if you don't know the answer, don't jump to try and solve. Solve in competitive exams, your trick should be read the paper, solve what you know, then hire, you know, categorize your questions as I know fully, I may be able to solve, I don't know the answer. So if you don't know the answer, don't waste your time for those questions. Sit for questions for which you know that you will be able to get the correct answer. Yes. Now for Baiju's app, it is free. The revision section is absolutely free for all of you. So you can definitely download that. For understanding cell chapter, I will pin the video in the comments. So with the students, we come to the end of today's class. Now, most importantly, for those of you who stayed with me till the very end, right? You were there with me from the beginning and now you are there with me till the end. I want you to, I want you all to tell me how did you feel with this class? Ma'am, not bad. I don't feel demotivated, right? I am able to do something I am able to do. We are having some kind of confidence. Yes? Are we feeling that I'm okay, okay, ma'am? No problem, right? No problem that it's okay, I may not be able to give some answers, but I was also able to solve. Yes? So that is what is important. Now, like today, we can, if you want to have more such classes, don't forget to let me know in the comments of this video asking specifically, right? Ma'am, I want this kind of concept. Ma'am, today what you did helped me, so I want more of this. So let us know what helped you more in the comments below and I will definitely and I'll let the team know so that we can all help you out, right? So thank you so much, students. Thank you so, so very much for staying with me till the very end. Now, for those of you who have more questions, I would really love to stay and answer, but it's also getting late for all of you. So let me know in the comments. I'll definitely reply. How to prepare for Neet Shubhangi? That is a session for a different day. So thank you so much for staying with me till the very end. I'll definitely take a different class on that Shubhangi. But up until then, I will be signing off. I will see you all soon. But up until then, take care all of you. Lots of love and bye-bye. Good night.